controlling function is the management has to see whether the work being done in the organization is done as per the plans of the management whoever are working for the organization their efforts have to be directed you have to bring together the men money materials and machines only then we can call it as a organization hello everyone i am purnima k faculty in the department of commerce vidyashram pri university college temple of excellence i welcome you all to this session on management called nature and significance of management so we all come across this word management which is commonly used in our daily lives now let us see what we will be learning in this session so in this session we will be discussing what is the meaning of management next what are the features of management next what are the objectives then importance of management then the nature of management and the levels and functions of management now let us just move on to the meaning of the word management if you can see in this picture we see a group of persons who are working so if you want to know what is the actual meaning of management we should understand that management is a group activity or management is defined as a process of getting things done with the aim of achieving goals effectively and efficiently now so we should understand that it is defined as a process so wherever there is a group activity we need to understand that management has to be there so if any group activity has to be carried out or if any group has a certain goal then the management has to be present to reach that goal now looking into the meaning of the word management it is defined as a process of getting things done getting things done means what getting the work done so whatever is the work for the organization it has to be done with the help of the people of the organization so whoever are working for the organization their efforts have to be directed now who has to direct the efforts the management has to direct the efforts and then how the work has to be done it has to be done effectively and efficiently so these three terms are very very important here so management is defined as a process of getting things done with the aim of achieving goals effectively and efficiently now so we will look into the meaning of the word process now if you can look into the meaning of the word process the process here means the primary functions or activities that the management performs now what is the work of this management now if you can look into the work of management what are the various work the management is doing first one is planning so what are the various plans for the organization so what is the plan for the next 5 years or the next 10 years or the next 15 years so that we have to sit and do so who will do this plans the management will plan for the organization then next function of management is organizing so organizing in other words is nothing but bringing together the four m's of business that is you have to bring together the men money materials and machines only then we can call it as a organization so organizing part or the work of organizing all these four m's of business so it is done by management then next work of management is staffing staffing means you have to see that the human resources are present so you have to see that the all the departments 
with all the positions you have created, they are well and adequately staffed in the organization. So in the staffing process, you will be just calling applications from various prospective applicants and so you will be scrutinizing the applications and then you will be giving them the jobs. Then next one is directing. So once you just have you once you have appointed all the necessary staff for the organization, the next work of management is to direct. So direct what? Direct the work of each person in the organization. So he or she has to be directed. What is his job in the organization? What is his position? What is his work? So all these things the management has to do. And lastly, the controlling. Now what is this controlling function? So controlling function is the management has to see whether the work being done in the organization is done as per the plans of the management. So this controlling function sees that the work is being done or the plans are being implemented perfectly or if there is any difficulty in implementation of the plans then they have to recheck the plans which are being implemented. So process means the primary functions or the work that the management performs. Now let us see the meaning of the words effectiveness and efficiency. Now what do you mean by effectiveness? So in the definition I had used the word effectiveness. Now in this effectiveness it is concerned with doing the right task. So each person has to do his job in the right manner. That is what it means. The right task, completing activities or each and every person has to complete the job which has been assigned to him and lastly the achieving the goals. So whatever the target has been set by the superior, so each and every person has to reach the target. So in effectiveness, we have three parts that is he should do the right task, complete the task and achieve the targets. Only if all the three conditions are satisfied, then we can say that that work has been effectively done. Now, next part is efficiency. What is the meaning of the word efficiency? Efficiency means doing the task correctly and with minimum cost. So we should do the whatever the job is given being done by the staff or hope the person who is doing the job, he should do the job in the correct manner and with minimum cost. So minimum cost means he should not make use of more of resources or there should not be any wasteful expenditure. He should do the task correctly and with minimum cost. So that is the meaning of the word efficiency. So next, so we have just now discussed what is the meaning of the word management and we have also just elaborated on the process of management and what is the meaning of the word effectiveness and efficiency. Now in this we will be looking into the features of management. If you can see this diagram or the image here, you can see that there are so many images here and each image represents something about management. So if you can see the table here, there are persons sitting around and discussing something. So there is plan and this person is having this he is sitting and doing his job here and there is a time frame here so he has to do the job within the time frame and there is lot of communication here there is lot of supervision here and there is the goal here that is the results which are being done then again we have lot of communications and awards and recognitions then we also have this ATM also and then we have the finance involved and the planning also. So in this picture you can see the various facets of the word management or management involves all these 
things now let us come to the features of management now first feature is management is a goal oriented process so we all know that all organizations or any business organization or any organization for that matter it has been formed with the definite purpose so if it is a business organization it will be for profits or if it is a service oriented organization it will be for service so if it is a any organization for that matter whatever is the goal of the organization that has to be achieved that is the first feature of management it is a goal oriented process so whatever is the goal if the goal is profit then management has to see that there is maximum profits in the organization all group activities so all the groups of people who are working in the organization they have to work work for the goals achievement of the goals of the organization so the it is a goal oriented process so whatever it is whether it is profit or whether it is service to the society that is the ultimate aim of management so all the activities of management are directed towards the achievement of the organizational goals then next one is management is all pervasive now why we call management is all pervasive so whether it is a small organization or whether it is an educational institution or a hospital or an it firm or any other a manufacturing industry we need to have management why because it is essential wherever groups of people come together and work so management is all pervasive whether it is a very small organization or a very large organization whether it is in india or whether it is abroad so anywhere you see management is necessary wherever you see group of people working together management is essential it is all pervasive so it is essential for all sectors and any type of organization and it envelops all the activities of the organization so any activity for that matter it needs management then management is multi dimensional so why we call management as multi dimensional first one is it has to look after the work so what is this management of work so management has a certain fixed plans as i told you earlier so the top level management will be doing the all the plans for the organization and whatever plans they have done or which they have decided upon that will be implemented in the lower levels of organization and they have to assign the jobs to different people so who has to be assigned what job that is done by the management next management of people so we know that management is essential wherever there is group activity so when people come together they will be bound to be clashes among people and so we need to see that people follow a particular set of rules and regulations so rules and regulations of the organization are done to see that people behave in a particular manner in a organization so management of people is an a most essential feature of management then next dimension of management is management of operations so if it is a um, production unit so it needs to see that there is some input which is coming into the organization in the form of raw materials and which goes as the output so all the operations involved in the production facility so that should be overseen by management so if you can have a quick look at the features of management management is a goal oriented process then management is all pervasive management is multi dimensional now next in continuing with the features of management the fourth feature of management is management is a 
continuous process. Now, why we call it as a continuous process? Because these functions of management, that is planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling, they are followed by the management in this order only. So, as long as the organization is in existence, these functions of management will keep on happening. So, we say that management is a continuous process. So, as and when the situation changes in the organization, these functions also keeps on changing. So, that is why we say that management is a continuous process. Then, next one feature of management is it is a group activity. As I told you an earlier, so in an organization, we have groups of people who will be coming in to do the work. So, whenever we have set of individuals who are doing the job, it has to be managed. Now, who will do the management? Who will be managing? The management will be managing the group activity. So, if there is only one person who is working in an organization, he need not be managed or he can take care of his own plans, he can take care of his organization. But then if it is a large organization with a large number of people working, then management is very, very essential or management is should be there to direct the efforts of this group of people. Then next we say management is a dynamic function. Now, what do you mean by dynamic? Dynamic is something which keeps on changing. So, we can see that the business organization will be the same whereas the environment surrounding the business organization whether it is economic, social, technical or technological or the political environment it keeps on changing. So, when the environment around the business changes then the management functions also has to change. So, if there are any uh, political pressures or if there are any economic policies which are not favorable for the working of the business then it the business has to adapt to the new economic policies. So, if there are latest in inventions or innovations in technology, then the organization has to adapt itself to the new technology. So, if there are any certain political parties which are different uh, set of ideals who are coming into power, then the management has to adapt itself to such parties. So, all these things are changing. So, along with it, the management has to change and that is why we tell that management is a dynamic function. So, it has to keep on changing. Then, management is an intangible force. Now, what is the meaning of this word intangible? Intangible is something which cannot be seen. So, we can say that management is an intangible force whenever the organization is running very efficiently and effectively. If you can see that the organization is making huge profits, it is growing every day by day and it is having a large increase in the number of employees and it is expanding every year, then we know that that organization is well managed. So, if there is a very good management, then we know that that organization is running successfully. So, management is an intangible force. We cannot see management, but we can always feel the presence. So, if it is well managed, then if it is well managed, then it will be in a very good condition. So, these are the features of management. Now, let us look into the objectives of management. So, if you can see that any organization is formulated with basic aim of having profit or with a or with a service motive. So, it may be profit motive or service motive. Now, looking into the objectives of management, the objectives can be classified into three. First one is the organizational objective. Second one is the social objective. Third one is the personal objective. Now, 
organizational objective now what is this organizational objective so it relates to the organization as a whole so as a whole the organization will have certain objectives with the aim of achieving these objectives this organization will be formed so in this organizational objective we have the first one that is the survival so any organization for that matter it should survive for a very long time so whenever you have you start an organization it may be a business organization or a service oriented organization we should see that it runs for a very long time so the survival of the organization is the most important aspect for any businessman so we should see that the organization survives now how does the organization survive only when the revenues which come into the organization are more than the cost involved in running the organization so the revenues should be more than the expenditure only then the organization can survive in the market then second one is profit so this is the most important aspect of any business organization so business organizations are always started with the aim of achieving profits so if there are profits it will be a motivation to the investor it will be a motivation to all the persons who are in the organization then profits help the business to stay in the market so profits are always there to see that it is a motivating force and to see that to ensure that the organization continues to be in operation then third one is growth so what do you mean by growth of any organization the first thing if the organization has to have growth it has to make profits second one is there should be large intake of employees every year and third one is it should see that there is a large number of openings or branches which of the same organization which should be opened every year only then we can say that the organization has been growing so in the organizational objectives so we have these three aspects one is survival in the market second one is profit third one is growth of the organization then next objective of management is social objectives now what is this social objectives so we all know that any organization will survive in the society only if the society interacts with the organization or if the products of the organization are used by the consumers of the society only then the business will be successful so the business cannot run in isolation or the organization gets its revenues from the society so the organization has an obligation towards the society now what is the obligation we call it as csr that is corporate social responsibility so whatever it has taken from the society whatever the benefit it has received from the society it should be returned back to the society so if there are any natural calamities then we can see so many big industrialists who will be coming forward to help the people who are stricken by this calamities so why do they do this it is because of this corporate social responsibility so they every organization owes its existence to the society and as a whole the organization has to look after the well being of the society so in the social objective so we should see that the organization does not pollute the environment so if there are any waste going out of the factory so it should be treated and then released then so all the activities of the organization should be environment friendly so there should not be any pollution 
because of the activities of the organization. Secondly, in the social objective, we should also see that the organization supports the unemployed youth of the society. In what way can it support the unemployed youth? By creating employment opportunities. So, first thing is you should have environmental friendly activities in the organization. Secondly, if you can give good employment opportunities to the youth of the society, then that will be a very good social objective of the organization. Then lastly, the personal objectives. Now, what do you mean by this personal objectives? So, each person who comes into the organization, he will have his own needs. So, whether he wants to fulfill his financial needs or the social needs or any other needs, so that will be the personal objective of the organization. So, in this personal objective, as I told you earlier, most of the employees, they will come with financial needs or with the need of social needs or with any other specified needs. They may be having some other specific needs, so which they want to fulfill by working in the organization. Now, the organization has to look after all these needs. Now, in this personal objective, he may have the financial needs. So, the financial needs of the employees will be fulfilled by the organization. In what way the organization can fulfill? It can be fulfilled by giving him adequate salary, compensation, bonus, incentives, etc. Then, next one is if the person has any social needs. Now, what are the social needs? So, it may be peer recognition. So, he wants to be recognized as the best employee of the year or he wants to be recognized as the achiever of the year. So, all these awards and recognitions, they help this person or this employee to identify himself with this organization. Then, he will be having some other career oriented needs also. That is, his own career growth. So, what is the organization offering to the employee in respect of his career advancement? So, he may have joined as a clerk and he would, after passing a few exams, he can be promoted as a manager. So, in this way, the organization should take care of the needs of each individual of the organization. So, employees will have their own needs which are to be satisfied by the organization. So, then we have the social objectives and the organizational objectives. So, that is relating to the objectives of management. Next, we look into the importance of management. So, in this picture, we can see a group of people who are working and there is a focus on one individual. So, this focus means each person has to work well so that the goals are reached. You can see this RMR here which shows the achievement of goals. So, if you can just correlate it with the importance of management. So, management helps in achieving group goals. Now, what is this group goals? The, what is the goal of the whole organization? The goal of the whole organization is to make profits. Okay, now the, this to make, in order to make profits, the entire group of people who are working in the organization, they have to work together. Now, who helps them in working? The management helps in achieving the group goals. Then, next one is management increases efficiency. How management can increase efficiency? Management will tell each and every person what is his actual job, what is his duties, what are his responsibilities and whom he is being, whom he should report and from whom he should take orders. So, everything will be decided by the management. So, when each employee follows the directions of his superior, then in uh, he will be working efficiently. So, when each individual works efficiently, the whole organization as a whole will become efficient. 
Then next one is management creates a dynamic organization. So dynamic organization means something which is keeps which keeps on changing. So management creates a dynamic organization. How it cre create a dynamic organization? By responding to the changes in the surroundings. So the business environment keeps on changing whether it is the economic, social, political or technical environment it keeps on changing. So when management responds to the changes in all these fields we can know that the management is a dynamic function or it creates a dynamic organization. So the management will lead the organization to such a path where it will suit itself or where it will adapt itself to the changing conditions. Then management helps in achieving personal objectives. As I told you earlier, what are the personal objectives? So personal objectives of the employees will be the final to satisfy his financial needs, satisfy his social needs and also satisfy his career growth and development. So if the management creates an atmosphere so that the person gets proper salary, he gets proper recognition whenever he has achieved something and it offers him a career path where he can grow, then such an um, uh, organization is bound to prosper. Now, who, when each individual prospers in his or her own field, then we can say that the organization is evolving or it helps in achieving personal objective. Now who helps in achieving all this? The management helps in achieving the personal objectives. Then management helps in the development of society. How can the society develop? Only when the organization makes profits. How can the organization make profits? When each person gives his 100% effort to the betterment of the organization, then if he can reduce wastages in the organization, then if each person works efficiently and effectively, then such an organization will run very well. So when the resources are used efficiently and when profits are coming into the organization, naturally the organization will be doing well and when the organization does well, so it will be beneficial to all the stakeholders of the organization, whether it is the investor, whether it is the shareholder, whether it is the employee or whether it is the ultimate consumer of the product. So all will be benefited when the organization runs very well. So we can say that management helps in the development of the society. So when the organization runs very well, so it makes lot of profits. It, this will be a motivator for the organization to start new branches. So when new branches are started, it creates more employment opportunities. So when more employment opportunities are created, it will result in more purchasing power, which in turn gives more money to the consumer so that they demand for more products. So in this way, the cycle keeps on moving. So in this way, we can have a better manage. So management will be helping in the development of the society. Thank you.